The RTX 4070 Super is here, and initial reviews paint a pretty promising picture of NVIDIA's $599 GPU that is a beast for 1440p gaming. But with lots of people now looking to potentially pick up a 4070 Super, how do you know what the best parts to pair with this card are? To ensure you avoid bottlenecks, get the best performance, and also achieve decent value for money. Well, in this video, I'll be going over the best CPUs, cases, and PSUs to pair up with the 4070 Super. Super, and talking about how this GPU and all the various designs from Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, Palette, and others can fit into your next gaming PC build. Let's do this. The Asus ROG Swift PG49WCD is an insane 49 inch super ultra wide panel that packs a punch. With a vibrant QD OLED display, 0.03 millisecond response time, and 144 hertz refresh rate, this thing is crazy. The 1000 nits peak brightness, backed up with a custom heatsink design and improved airflow keeps the panel bright and prevents burning, while a built-in KVM and 90 watts of USB-C power delivery makes this a great monitor for a multitude of applications. Learn more at the first links in the description below. As you can see from this range of MSRP-oriented designs, the 4070 Super, like the old 4070, is not a particularly large card, and power consumption too has only jumped up from 200 to 230 watts, and under most scenarios you're never even going to be hitting that figure. One thing that's particularly interesting Interesting though about all of these cards, which is different to the previous 4070, is that they all use the 12 pin next gen PCIe Gen 5 power connector. Bit of a mouthful. Basically, if you want to avoid the use of a dongle, they do come included with the card, you'll need to pick up a power supply or an adapter with that 12 pin cable. I'll come on to power supplies in more detail later, but feel free to use the timestamps below to navigate to your desired section. And let's kick things off with the best CPUs to pair up with the 4070 Super. When it comes to CPUs, you've obviously got two brands to choose from. You either go for AMD Ryzen or you go for Intel. On the Ryzen side, you want to look at Ryzen 7000 exclusively for 4070 Super. The older 5000 chips are just largely not going to be powerful enough, maybe with the exception of the 5800X 3D if you're looking to bag yourself a bargain. On the Intel side of things, it's a little bit less clear cut. Their 13th gen CPUs are oddly enough an easier recommendation than lots of their 14th gen chips. They run less hot, they'll save you a little bit of money, and generally speaking, you just have a few more options. On the Ryzen side, my primary recommendation would be the Ryzen 5 7600X. Taking a look at somewhere like Newegg for some up-to-date pricing and availability, a 7600X can be easily found for $229. Combine that with the $600 MSRP of the 4070 Super, and you've got a great combo there for around about $800, $850. Six cores and 12 threads is at the minimum, really, for where I'd be looking for the 4070 Super. And it goes without saying that this is a combo aimed squarely at gaming and not really really going to be great for productivity type applications. If you want to step up that performance a bit more with a couple more cores and get slightly higher frame rates, something like the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D is going to be your best bet. This has AMD's 3D vCache technology as well, which gives you basically loads more L3 cache and unlocks one of the biggest bottlenecks. And it's going to be particularly useful, believe it or not, for 1080p gaming. As at that lower resolution, the CPU is going to become more of a bottleneck than the graphics card. A great chip for those looking at max FPS in games like Warzone 3, where it needs good CPU and GPU horsepower. The 7800X 3D is going to set you back more than the 7600X. Looking at Newegg once again, just to give us a bit of an idea. And you see in here, we're standing at 399. I have seen this go as low as 350 as well, but it's obviously pushing us much closer to that $1,000 price bracket. On the Intel side of the equation, you've obviously got chips like the 14600K, which at $300 is a really great potential middle ground, while the last generation 13600K will set you back in the region of 283 so it's obviously a cheaper chip, but you're going for a slightly older CPU design. I would suggest those on a budget looking to get max performance for as little as possible, go for the Ryzen 5 7600X. While those with more to spend, consider either the 13600K or at the top end, the Ryzen 7800X3D. The extra 15 to 20% performance from the 4070 Super makes your CPU choice more important than previously, and recommendations you might have heard before probably a little bit out of date. But you're likely not just looking for a new CPU for the 4070 Super. There's also parts to consider like the case and power supply too. And the case is a bit of a difficult one actually, because when 40 series first launched, the cards were massive. I mean, let's compare this with a 4090 and you can see the size difference and the weight difference is absolutely staggering. If we put one card on top of the other as well, you can see that the 4070 Super is dwarfed even by a 4080. And what that means is you simply don't need the really large cases we all thought we'd be buying when the original 40 series first got announced. That is such a 
heavy graphics card. It takes me by surprise every time. Now on the case front, again, I'd like to offer a few key options. So budget, mid-range, and high-end choices. On the budget side, the Fractal Pop Air is a chassis we've built in a few times and often pops up on my new egg and PC part picker recommendations as a great value choice. For $89, you can get the one with the RGB fans or for $10 less, one without RGB. Personally, I'd go for the one that's $10 more as I think it's great value for money. As I say, we've built some really high-end systems in this before and although it's a budget case, it has the features and build quality that would kind of surprise you. This wouldn't be the ideal choice in my mind, but those of you shopping again on a budget looking at something like a Ryzen 5 7600X for the CPU should consider this as it's a no frills design that also gives you the features you actually need in a gaming PC. Of course, if you'd like to spend a little bit more money, there are some great alternative options to consider too. One that's a little bit of an outlier in terms of often gets left out is actually Thermal Take Ceres 300. You can see here it's well rated. You get included 140 mil RGB fans at the front and a 140 mil at the rear. The 4070 Super is by no means a particularly hot running GPU, but it is gonna give more thermal output than the 4070 it replaces. So a case like this with particularly good airflow and particularly nice fans is not a bad option. Another great case choice actually comes in from Deepcool and it's their CH560 Digital. It's not the first digital case that they've made, but it's actually really clever. You get a small included screen. It's quite modest in size, but it lets you uh, monitor CPU and GPU temperatures. Great for a 4070 Super build. And it's got a cool additional extra area of airflow where the PSU would be. This also aids airflow for the graphics card too. And of course, all of these cases have got plenty of clearance for something like a 4070 Super. Let me actually locate the biggest 4070 Super by length, which looks to be this gigabyte card and measure it to see just how long it is. You can see that end to end, it only comes in at just over 26 centimeters or 261 millimeters. For my Imperial viewers, that's just over 10 inches. And what that means is cases like this with, let's see what the support is. I'm gonna hazard a guess we're looking the high 350 millimeter mark. Yeah, even higher than that, 380 mil are gonna be absolutely fine. Even if manufacturers like Gigabyte start bringing out massive cards, you're gonna have absolutely no problems whatsoever. But with your CPU and case now selected, what are the best power supply options for the 4070 Super? Now, as I mentioned earlier, the total graphics or board power of this is only 230 watts. And it's something that's actually incredible when you look at the Ada Lovelace architecture is the power efficiency. 230 watts is basically half of what we've been pulling on an i7 14700K as an example. And to have so much graphics power for so little board power is frankly staggering. Aside from needing that 12 pin power connector or having to use the ugly included dongle, you don't actually need much wattage. And that almost becomes the challenge when buying a power supply. Often you have to buy high-end units to get that 12 pin power connector. And that means extra money wasted that we don't need to spend. Thankfully, a couple of brands have caught up with this a little bit quicker than others. Rather unsurprisingly, one example of that is actually MSI, who evidently got so fed up that no one was making any power supplies for their graphics cards that they made their own. This is 850 watts, which is still more than you actually need for the 4070 Super. We'd recommend looking at a 700 watt unit or above. Even still, can often be found for sub $100 if you shop around or sub 100 pounds. Latest pricing for everything will be linked at Newegg and Amazon down below. And of course, it gives you the 12 pin power cable with an 80 plus gold certification out of the box. One thing that's quite nice about this power supply as well, I must admit, is actually its size. Often you see with these power supplies that are ATX3, they can be quite large. And that's thankfully something that the A850GL is not. PCI Gen 5, and you can see that power cable on the back. It's got loads of modular connections, but it isn't particularly large and won't cause any compatibility issues with any case that not only we've recommended, but that you're probably considering for the 4070 Super. But MSI aren't the only ones to catch on. In fact, one brand that's been extraordinarily quick to the game here is actually Thermaltake. Their Smart BM3 range remains to my knowledge, the cheapest PCI Gen 5 compatible power supplies full stop. This one is 650 watts, has over 800 reviews. We've used it in a couple of builds, the 750 model, and been impressed and comes in at $59. I mean, step up to the 750, you're looking at 69. The 850, you're looking at 79. You can go really, really quite high end. The only disadvantage is this, the semi-modular nature. Now, this cable that runs here is your motherboard and CPU power connector. Now, granted, everyone needs to plug those in anyway, but it is often nice if the unit is fully modular. Thankfully, they have got some fully modular options. If you look at their range of PCI Gen 5 compatible power supplies, if you jump up from the Smart BM3 to their Tough Power lineup, which is only going to cost you another $10 in of itself, you get that fully modular interface. And it's 80 plus gold rather than 80 plus bronze. Personally, I'd just buy the BM3 with the semi-modular cables and be done with it. No need 
need to go to super overboard here. We're also increasingly seeing options from other GPU manufacturers like Asus who have got their Tough Gaming 750. This is aimed to be a, not budget, but an affordable power supply that runs on the ATX3 standard. This is 80 plus gold and has a 10 year warranty. So potentially a good investment for a longer period of time. To be totally honest though, pick up a 700 watt decently reviewed unit of anything. And if you don't mind the dongle, you're probably gonna be okay. The 4070 Super though is an intriguing little card that delivers great 1440p performance for the same price as the 4070. Some may feel that this is the card the 4070 should have always been, but at least we have it now. If you'd like to read a full write up on all of our favorite CPU, GPU, case combos, and as well learn which of the 4070 Supers we recommend to be the best, check out the links in the description below. There you'll find write ups on geekwatt.com and where to buy links for everything mentioned in today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to get subscribed. Thanks for watching. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.